It is the 21st day of March 2017. Many thanks for joining us here on KTN News Desk, the second annual summit for senators and members of the county assembly has officially been launched. Our reporter Patrick Amimo is covering that summit for us. He will be joining us live from Mombasa with details on some of the things to expect from there. And uh, Amimo, just uh, before we get into it quickly, what do we expect from your end today? Uh, thank you, Akisa. It is uh, it is a very very busy uh, busy week for this legislative uh, summit, uh, which will be running for about three days. Some of the things they are looking at are the challenges that are facing the the first five years into county assemblies uh, across the country, 47 counties, some of the challenges they've faced, some of the success stories. So they will be sharing some of these things among other issues. All right, and we'll definitely get to that. Remember, on the political side, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy are touring Kisi and Nyamira counties to try and woo the voters. Rashid Ronald is on standby for us with that. What kind of reception have they gotten so far from residents on the ground, Rashid? All right, seems he didn't really get me clearly, but of course Rashid Ronald will be speaking to us later on as we take a look at um, what this visit to Kisi and Yamira counties really means for the president and his deputy, even as we head into the electioneering uh, season or the August 8th polls. But first things first, let's take a look at the highlights. President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy make inroads in Gusiland 139 days to the election. Speaker Justin Muturi to rule on the petition to remove the Auditor General. Question is, will this ignite another row with the judiciary? And Pope Francis begs for forgiveness over Rwanda's genocide. Good afternoon. Our sign language interpreter is Meresha Owiti and I am Akisa Wandera. It is 139 days to the election and we begin this bulletin on a political note where President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Bruto will today start a two-day tour of Kisi and Nyamira counties. Uhuru will traverse Nyamira where he is expected to launch projects and address rallies at Magwagwa, Ikonge, Ekerenyo, Nyamira, Nyambaria and Nyansiongo. Tomorrow, the president takes his campaign to Kisi County. Kisi and and Nyamira counties are considered ODM strongholds and in the 2013 election ODM leader Raila Odinga beat President Uhuru Kenyatta in the two counties. Jubilee appears to be making inroads in the region following the defection of key leaders who include Kisi Senator Chris Obure and Iala Member of Parliament Joseph Kiangoi. The two ditched ODM for the Jubilee party. Let's now speak to our reporter, Rashid Ronald, who's joining us live from Kisi with an update on what exactly is happening. Rashid, have they arrived? Give us an itinerary of some of the things we should expect from them. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, my colleague Akisa Ondera in Nairobi. Uh, as we speak right now, I'm at a place called Magwagwa. This is where uh, we expect the epicenter of this tour. We've been waiting since morning. We were told that President Uhuru Kenyatta was scheduled to arrive here at around 10.30, but as far as uh, we are concerned right now, he hasn't arrived. But I'm sources indicate that as we speak right now, he's airborne to this place, and any minute he's going to arrive here in Magwagwa. Uh, and remember, this tour, he was coming to the Kisi, or Gusiland tour uh, with uh, Deputy President William Ruto. I'm told William Ruto has already landed at a place uh, called uh, uh, it's, it's called Chebilat. That's now he's having a rally there and then from there he's going to fly all the way to this place so that they can converge here with the President Uhuru Kenyatta. This is a very very sig significant uh, uh, tour uh, for President Uhuru Kenyatta. Remember during the last general election ODM managed to uh, secure a high percentage of uh, votes in this region 
region. And of course, we call it a swing vote, very crucial. Now every team is trying to move around, trying to ensure that Jubilee is trying to ensure that it captures this swing vote. It has realized for it to win the election, one must be able to ensure that uh, the swing vote is actually safe. And we are talking about uh, the numbers, the 50 plus one. So it's very, very important for Jubilee to ensure that it really captures uh, this uh, land uh, of Omogusi, that is Nyamira County and uh, Kisi County. No wonder today he's having a lot of, uh, uh, he's touring Nyamira County, uh, opening several projects, roads, projects like this road where I'm standing is called uh, Magwagwa. It goes all the way to uh, to, 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 to uh, Chabera from uh, Magwanga to Chabera. Uh, he's going to inspect the construction which is going on. And talking of the construction, I have the man who is in charge of the construction of this road and of course he's going to take a, tell us, take us, take, uh, brief us on what has happened so far since the construction began. Uh, welcome to KT News. Please tell us uh, what the status of the road. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, Chebera Ikonge Chebarati. It is at five kilometers long. Uh, we have been uh, working the last one year. We have already been able to do 27 kilometers in terms of service. Uh, no tarmac so far has been uh, laid, but we expect in the next two weeks to start uh, laying tarmac so that uh, then by December, the entire road, which is 37.5, plus another 7.5 to Nyamuse. Nyamuse is a sub uh, county headquarters, so it's a very, very important center as well. So we would expect that uh, this work is going to be complete. It's all being funded by uh, Kenya government at 3.1 billion shillings. Thank you. Uh, you've had uh, Akisa, the construction is going on, 3.5 billion Kenyan shillings sponsored by the Kenyan government. And President Uhuru, of course, is coming to inspect to ensure that uh, the, the construction is going on smoothly. It has taken years, and I'm uh, quite sure that residents here are really excited. They want to see uh, the road uh, tarmac. And of course, talking of residents, Karibu katika KTN, tuweleze, munatarajia nini katika mkutano huu waleo kwati mpapo Rais Uhuru Kenyata anakuja hapa kwenu? Okay, asante sana kwa nafasi msuli enyo ni manipatia kuongea na siku leo. Sasa ningesema hivi sisi kama mkaaji wa eneo hili la Mawawa ambao tuko katika Nyamira North tunatarajia maendeleo haswa tuwe hii barabara ya Chiblat yenye inapita inaenda mpaka Jabera. Kitokelezia tunatarajia maendeleo kubwa sana haswa tunaona kama hii serikali ya Chubili iko na usawa katika eneo sote sa Kenya yetu. Nikana kwamba sasa sisi kama wakaaji wa hapa sasa tunaweza kuwa na transportation poa vitu yetu kama mandisi kama machungwa zile kitu ambayo tunapanda eneo hili sasa kama hii barabara itafunguka tunasema ni asante sana rais sasa tutakuwa na nafasi na, na, na msuli sana kutransporti vitu zetu kutoka hapa hadi kuelekea eneo lingine yeah, Kisa, you've heard that this uh, area is, uh, when talking of Kikusi land, we're talking of uh, agriculture here, we're talking of crops like tea, we're talking of bananas, we're talking of many crops, cash crops here and there. Of course, they expect the president to tell them the way forward, what the government has put in place in so far as uh, uh, the agricultural sector is concerned. I also have, karibu, 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 uja luzungumza kidoko, jaribu tu, tuambia unatarajia nini katika katika uh, safari hii ya Rais Kujab? Mimi ni kona fura kona barabara yeti mekua, na rami meoka sasa tutapata transportation vizuri tu, tunatarajia tena kuna daraja tunataka ichengwa hapa hapa kipsiki hapa ndio tupate kufanya biashara vizuri kwenda hapa hii daraja nyingine mimi nasema ni shukrani kwaacha hii barabara yetu kwa tufanye biashara vizuri yeah, Akisa Wandera, you've heard tomorrow after here, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto will also tour uh, uh, Kisi County where they expect also uh, to open up or commission several projects apart from uh, uh, calling on uh, electors to actually uh, vote for Jubilee and uh, his re-election come uh, the next general election. Back to you, Akisa. Rashid, thank you very much for that. Let's now dissect some of the things that Rashid has said ahead of this particular visit. He says that the president is uh, some few minutes away from uh, Guagua. Joining me in studio, Dunstan Omari, a political analyst who also happens uh, to come from Kisi, specifically Nyamira County. That place, that county, Nyamira County. Nyamira County, that yes. That county. Ah, great. What All do you right. think about that visit? Uh, Rashid describes it as a swing county. Do you think it is? Well, first and foremost, I want for the public knowledge to say that I come from Nyamira County. Mm -hmm. they mention, the names that have been mentioned are names I know very well. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, the president is starting with at Magwagwa. Magwagwa is less than uh, 500 meters from the home of uh, the East African Legislative Assembly member, Joseph Kiangoi. So that mm -hmm. is why 
the president is landing there, the home base uh, of Kiangoi. After he moves from Kiangoi, he's moving towards the Konge. When you talk about the Konge, you're talking mm -hmm. about a junction, a distance of around two kilometers from uh, Kericho County, mm -hmm. Bomet County, and Yamira County. So the T estates are around there. That road is so critical because it links from Bomet County, moves uh, ahead the Kligoris area, the settlement part of uh, Nyamira uh, County, mm -hmm. all the way to Sondu, where it is called Lichabera, to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So it is a very serious road that people have always asked for quite a lot of time mm -hmm. why that road has been done. That the president has done that road. One, will the Kisis, will the people of Nyamira uh, turn their, their interest? Number mm -hmm. two, the president, after leaving Ikonge, Ikonge is our epicenter of the horticultural base yeah. of Nyamira County. There is a market there, bananas are there, uh, pineapples are there, oranges are there, tea is the major cash crop around there. There are tea estates around those areas. He is going to Ekerenyo, which is a sub-county in, in uh, a place called North Mogrango. That is another very fundamental area. After he leaves there, he'll go to the Nyamira headquarters, the county headquarters, the base of West Mugrango constituency, where the governor, mm -hmm. uh, Nyagarama, comes from. Then he will go to Nyambaria. Nyambaria is the base where there is another road that is being constructed from Kibirigo heading to Metamaya, mm -hmm. then heading to the CS's home, mm -hmm. uh, Matiangi's home. So in one aspect, the president has narrowed his trips mm -hmm. to areas that are very, very friendly yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it might have a big impact mm -hmm. on the Kisi vote on what he's doing. Of course, we are continuing with this discussion in a bit. Just a taste of uh, um, the discussion I will be having here with Damstan Omari, uh, who is a political analyst. But before we get back into matters politics, the second annual summit for senators and members of the county assemblies to assess the progress of devolution was officially opened in Mombasa today. The summit organized by the Senate and the County Assemblies Forum is themed effective legislators for sustainable grassroots development. It comes in the wake of uh, proposals by MCAs for the removal of budget caps by the Controller of Budget and the Commission for Revenue Allocation, as well as the recommendation to scrap the Senate by the Budget Committee. All right, let's now speak to our senior parliamentary reporter, Patrick Amimo, who now joins us live from Mombasa. Patrick, thank you very much for joining us. What exactly comes out of this session today? Uh, thank you, Akisa. We've had the Cabinet Secretary for Devolution and Planning, Mwangi Kyunjuri, represent uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta at this particular function for the official opening. And from the President's speech, some of the highlights we saw is that uh, the President has asked members of the county assemblies to have uh, to use uh, the funds, the devolved funds in a prudent manner. He's been, there's been concern that there's mis misappropriation of funds at county, uh, uh, county level, and the president says that uh, the funds devolved to, uh, to the county assemblies should be used prudently. The other aspect that is also, the president has said, is uh, has recognized the Senate uh, for having conducted uh, mature, mature debates and also ensuring that devolution uh, stays in the country. Joining me now is uh, the former chairperson of the Transition Authority, uh, Wamwangi, uh, Wamwangi, just to tell us some of the challenges uh, that uh, the Transition Authority, uh, that, that still we still face as we transit uh, from the national to county level government. Just Mr. Wamwangi, some, what are some of these challenges? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, before even we go to the challenge, let us say this is a very exciting opportunity and moment. And this is a wonderful um, uh, legislative con conference, summit. And I think I have seen uh, that people are addressing the issues directly and very well. And uh, I think as we wind up this uh, transitional um, uh, dispensation into the next one, we still see and we have highlighted the issue of uh, intergovernmental relationships. And this is about the working together of uh, institutions, particularly because the Constitution, Article 6, uh, 2, says that this is a consultative, a cooperative um, devolution. And therefore, we have highlighted, and I've seen it being highlighted here, and this is what I've come also to say, that we still are a bit far in terms of getting the Senate and the National Assembly to work together and in the same direction. We still have to see the Senate, the Parliament, 
and the judiciary working together because the judiciary has also claimed its part in developing and supporting devolution. We still have to see a county executive, the governor and the executive working with the Senate. We still have to see the, the county assemblies defining their role and their relationship with the Senate yes. and the overaching responsibility of the Senate to support the devolution process in Kenya. Just looking at some of the issues here is to do with the transfer of roles or functions. And we've seen the, the, the county government have been blaming the national government of uh, maybe not devolving funds to, to, to go together with the, with the functions. Is this, is this uh, uh, something that is of, of concern? Because we see there is still a tussle between functions which, which of governments and which one belong to the national government. At the moment there is no, and the president has acknowledged that, and um, I think those Kenyans who are in the know, they know that before the transition authority left, it transferred all the functions that are devolved by the constitution. They managed to transfer all the functions. Now the issue of funding is what you call uh, attrition, because in essence, I think parties have to sit together and agree whether there are some aspects of those uh, functions that are not adequately supported. We in the transition authority tried to do that, but um, we were not highly supported when we started uh, something called costing of functions. Because only a scientific costing of functions could tell whether there are some money that are still retained uh, or there are some functions that require bigger support than they are being supported. Uh, so I would recommend that we have and we complete that exercise, that uh, transition authority of costing of functions. Th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wangi. That is the former Emeritus uh, Transition Authority chairperson, just telling us uh, some of the challenges that uh, the Transition Authority face. And here we've seen uh, that uh, things have to do with uh, it's a matter that was highlighted. Uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly did indicate that probably we, the inter intergovernmental authority should be trans uh, trans uh, transformed into a commission, maybe to see to uh, smooth running of functions between the national and county level. From Mombasa here, uh, we'll, we'll be linking further with the more more discussions but now back to the studio Akisa to continue with the rest of the news. Patrick thank you very much for that. Let's now take a short commercial break. Don't go too far. We have a lot lined up for you here on KTN News Desk. <laughs>